Hello, this is Chris Winker. I'm a GIS epidemiologist at the New Mexico Department of Health. This is a training video for the IBIS community of practice. I will demonstrate the basic process of how to create a GeoJSON map layer from a shapefile using ArcMap GIS software. Later videos will discuss the finer points of finessing a GeoJSON's web performance. This video just covers the step of creating a GeoJSON. ArcMap is pretty much the industry standard for commercial GIS software, but the licenses can be a bit pricey. Many government agencies implement ArcMap, and some licenses can be shared among multiple users, so it may be worth checking with your IT department to see if ArcMap is available. After installation, two main GIS programs will be available. Arc Catalog is a GIS file explorer. It's similar to Windows Explorer, but it just shows GIS-related files. ArcMap is the program where data are displayed, symbolized, and analyzed. This is the program we will use to create a GeoJSON. Here I'm using version 10.4.1. And notice that we can open a mini window of Arc Catalog within ArcMap. As we saw in a previous video, our standard approach starts with a shapefile and transforms it into the GeoJSON. Now I've already downloaded a census tract shapefile from the US Census website, and we'll use this to create a GeoJSON. In ArcMap, you can add a layer by going to File, Add Data, Add Data, or you can use the Add Data drop-down button in the top toolbar, or you can navigate to a directory in Arc Catalog and drag the file into ArcMap. ArcMap does come with a wide range of tools. Here in the Conversion Toolbox, there is a JSON converter. I've experimented with this tool, and even though it does create a GeoJSON, for some reason, this particular flavor or format of the Esri version of this file does not work with Leaflet, so we can't use this tool to create an IBIS map layer. Instead, there are two free open source custom tools that we can add to ArcMap. One is called GeoJSON Madness, and that can be downloaded at the GitHub website. The other custom tool is also on GitHub. It's called Esri to Open. Both of these tools haven't been updated for a few years, and it looks like they were running on older versions of ArcMap. But I've tested them bo both using ArcMap 10.4.1, and they do seem to still function normally. So download either or both of these files and add the tools to your ArcMap toolbox by going to right-click and Add Toolbox and navigating to the directory of your downloads. Let's add GeoJSON Madness, and let's add Esri to open. So let's run the GeoJSON Madness exporter. It's a simple process of selecting the shape file. Now, IBIS does have some file naming conventions. For easy identification, GIS file names start with geo, followed by a descriptor. So we're going to call this file GeoTract. And just for this demonstration, I'll append the name of the tool that we use so we can keep them straight. For GIS layers that will be used for displaying choropleths, the GeoJSON file name absolutely needs to match the dimension name in the dimension files, such as in this query module file. The dimension name here needs to match the name of the GeoJSON and vice versa. Now notice in this GeoJSON Madness tool, the export is automatically assigned a JSON extension, even though it's technically going to be a GeoJSON file. Later, we'll see that this is actually just how we want it. We can ignore this checkbox. This is just a GitHub file sharing technique. So let's finish the export. And we're done. Now for comparison, we can run the Esri to open tool. Again, select the shape file. Give it the 
same name. Notice that this tool gives a couple of options for the file extension type, including both GeoJSON and JSON. When we use this tool, we need to select the GeoJSON option. I've experimented with the .json option, and it turns out that those exports will not open in Leaflet, and they can't be used in IBIS. We'll accept the rest of the defaults. And the tool is running, and it's done. Now once that .geojson file is created, we need to do one last thing. In Windows Explorer, navigate to that directory with the new file with the GeoJSON extension, and we need to rename that to just have a .json extension. This doesn't change the GeoJSON file's function, but because some of the code that's running IBIS is written to call on files with a .json extension, we need to make this small change, but I still informally refer to this file as a GeoJSON. Now, to independently verify that our new files exported correctly, we can open them in a web browser at this geojson.io site. We can open the geojson madness version, and we can open the Esri to open version, and both were successful. So these steps have transformed a shapefile to produce a GeoJSON that can be loaded by Leaflet and displayed in IBIS. However, to allow database linkages in IBIS and to improve web performance in Leaflet, several other intermediate steps need to be completed before we do create a final GeoJSON. Those additional steps will be the topic of the next training videos. We hope that this introductory video about IBIS mapping has been instructive. Please check out the other videos in the IBIS Community of Practice YouTube channel.